y'all, <laughs> I love vlogging with this thing right here. This is like my newest camera. It's the Hero 11 Black. I love that it's compact, discreet, and the perfect on-the-go camera that can be used in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places. Before we go any further, I gotta say big thank you to GoPro for partnering with me on this one um, and also supporting the channel. So I've taken this camera with me, you know, pretty much all over for the last few weeks. Filming, <laughs> filming, lots of filming. Um, ooh, are you filming right now? Yeah. How does it look? It looks decent here. Yeah, it does. It's wide. Right. Like literally, like I'm within an inch and it's still okay. wide. Okay. That is true. I just right. thought about that when you said that. I was like, hold up, I'm mad close too. Yeah, and it looks normal. There's like almost no distortion. Right. With that said and considered, this is my experience with the new GoPro Hero 11. So there are a couple of new features between this one and last year's model. And I'm gonna throw that up on screen right now for you to take a look at, cause that's the short version, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on those things and discuss how they actually look in real day-to-day -day use. So one of my favorite features and maybe top of the list even, <laughs> is the way that you can now capture content and use it across all social media. So this is going to give a solve for an issue that I've had <laughs> quite a bit when filming, which is what platform am I gonna put it on? But with the new eight by seven ratio option for the GoPro Hero 11, you are now able to capture a super wide view that you can crop in and use in a square grid format like on IG, or you can get a vertical video to be used on TikTok and Instagram, all from one source. So you don't have to shoot multiple times to get your content. So in short, it basically grabs everything in one big square. So you can change the framing after the fact to fit the type of social content that you're trying to make. But if you want, you do at least have the option to still go ahead and put it in vertical mode as you want. And Hyperview, that is also one of my favorite features to enjoy because of how much it puts into frame. I like that, you know, somewhat fisheye look. It gives you a different perspective and I like how much it can easily capture. So this to me is great for a point of view or action so shot. Just toward the Eiffel Tower, or took photos near the Eiffel Tower. Um, I'm wondering how the audio is gonna fare, but whoop, dropping stuff. <laughs> And if you partner this with that new improved HyperSmooth 5.0 plus 360 horizon lock, you then have a super smooth and super wide shot that makes it feel like you're there when you're watching it. So let me show you what it looks like with this 360 horizon lock. The cool thing is like when I rotate this right now, basically what you should be seeing is the image not moving at all. Like Joel should still be in the same orientation he was originally. That is 360 horizon lock. Perfect, especially for scenarios where you're running or you might give somebody the camera to record you and they're not the best at, you know, keeping it steady. Cause you know, there are scenarios where you get your friends to film something for you. And sometimes they forget they're filming and they start looking and next thing you know, the shot is capturing something way over there. <laughs> this might help in certain scenarios to keep you or whatever you're trying to film in frame, whether you're doing it or someone else. But the quality on this overall was amazing, especially to use this on my recent trip to Paris. I was mounting this camera on just about anything and everywhere that I possibly could, especially when I paired it with this suction base here. It made it so much easier to grab footage on the plane or in the car or just and all these different random places that I'd even think about that the suction base can mount on, like a table. And that's the thing, I use this more as a lifestyle camera and not as much as an action-based camera where I'm trying to do things that are rugged uh, that we oftentimes find people use GoPros for. I used to look at my lifestyle as not action-based enough for a GoPro. Because what I realized in using this is that it's truly more to it than that. Like it's truly more than just an action camera. It's basically a vlogging camera to easily capture content on the go. At least that's what it is to me. And then speaking of, although it's not a new feature of the 11, I still cannot get enough of this right here. Hold up, let me show you. The little selfie screen. It takes the guesswork out of making sure you're in frame or that you look good on camera. And it also takes the guesswork out of someone being okay with the way that you're capturing them as they can then see themselves and make the necessary changes as needed. But another change with this one is 10-bit color. So there's more dynamic range, better exposure, and just more detail in the images overall. There's even like new night effects that include light painting to create brush stroke effects 
with moving light. And star trails, which uses the Earth's rotation to create these cool looking star trails across the night sky. And then there's vehicle light trails, which pretty much uses long exposure in dark environments to create light trails for moving vehicles. That's pretty cool too though. And on top of that, GoPro has also made improvements to the image quality by now offering a higher frame rate of 5.3K at 60 frames per second and 4K at 120 frames per second. So you got more shooting options this go round. But if you couple this with the GoPro Quick app, it just takes things to another level because it's gonna give you the option of like powerful editing tools and also a place to keep the best shots in one location. And I gotta say, I love this because it also gives you kind of like peace of mind because it has an auto upload option that's gonna quickly back things up to the cloud and also be able to deliver like at the end of, you know, the day that you capture um, what are called like highlight videos. So you don't have to make them. The app makes it for you. which rules out some of the work and the worry that you may have had originally, and also making sharing to social a bit easier. And the battery on this, oh my gosh. It is definitely a noticeable improvement. But one thing that's just as important as the camera quality and features is its interface. And this one, you know, we're good. It doesn't disappoint as everything is still easy to access. You can swipe down to get to your settings, swipe up to look at the content that you captured, or swipe left and right to switch modes. And you also can dive into your settings and choose an easy mode, which is going to rule out some of these other options that you see on screen that you normally have access to in what's considered the pro mode. However, when you're in pro mode and you have a specific option of capture at the bottom, you can tap there to change the type of video or photo that's being taken. Personally, this is the mode that I like to use as it makes changing between them a lot easier for me. You can even resort the list or tap the edit button to change things about it, or you can just tap the plus button to create your own. Now I have mine set so that the settings I use most are at the top. But overall, if you cannot tell, I have truly been enjoying this, especially when you couple it with all the different accessories out there that are offered for it. The suction mount is something new that I've tried, but yeah, it's definitely now in my everyday carry when I take my camera gear with me. But if you're curious about the pricing, I'm gonna have a link down below with its current, you know, info in terms of that. But at the present time, this is going for $3.99. And I feel with the versatility in which it offers, the quality of the image and videos in which it offers, and the abundance of accessories to just further amplify things, I could say, to me, it's worth it. And please, you know, don't fear or worry about not having a life that's, you know, action-based enough. This is really just about capturing, you know, your videos and things on the fly in a way that's easy and discreet. Cause some places don't even like you bringing cameras in them, but this one right here, you might, you might not, they might not know. <laughs> but also with the selfie screen, you can turn that option off if you do want that to instead be a black screen while you're recording, that can be accessed through your settings. So just a you know, little quick tidbit. But I'm not gonna ramble any further than I already have, cause I will. <laughs> so feel free though to drop your questions down below in the comment section. Um, I will do my best to answer them or you can hit me up on Instagram at techmeout, T-E-C-H-M-E-0-U-T. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.